Hey friends, I hope you're having an amazing day. This is a shameless plug going out to my free downloads. I just loaded up cycling snacks. So these are a great way to make your own healthy snacks for a training inside, outside, or for the family. So go to askcoachsylvie.com and download them today. All right. Welcome back for another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Daou and sitting in beautiful Chelsea, Quebec, Canada and Laurel King, who is sitting in gorgeous Lake Tahoe, which, you know, both very wintry scenes here. And I'm so, so excited to have Laurel on the, the podcast because I was uh, scoping her out on LinkedIn and I was like, who is this lady who has all these job opportunities in the cycling business? So here, like guys, if you're not on LinkedIn and you're looking for a job, this is the first place you need to go. You go on LinkedIn, find Laurel King or join one of these cycling groups. And there's a plethora of job openings. And that's why she's here because she's going to share with us how she created a business around like basically recruiting and finding people to fill jobs for these high level companies. And um, so her business, and she's the founder of outdoorindustryjobs.com. And she has, she's had this outdoor company for 35 years. So she's a well, natural. Not quite right. <laughs> for over 35 years. No, 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 no. I've had this business for 16 years, but I've been okay, in the cycling she's... business for over 35. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Oops. She's worked in the outdoor industry for over yeah. 35 there years. There you go. All right. 16 years with her company, which yeah. is like, Anyways, seriously, very impressive. And um, I was just uh, blown away by all her posts. And I was like, what? we need to find, have her on here to, because I was like really, really curious. So I'm really thankful. And thank you, Laurel, for accepting to being on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. All right. I'm super excited. Let's just dive in. The, the only question I ever ask is how you got into cycling and, you know, how it just led you to be in the industry for okay. that amount of time. So how did, how did it all start? Sure. Um, let's <laughs> say it's kind of a long story, so I won't drag it out too long, but I started cycling in the late eighties and I met this couple through, I used to play in an indoor soccer league in Davis, California. And um, they uh, started the bike trek program for the American Lung Association in Sacramento. The bike trek program was a fundraising program for, so people raised money and they would take them on a week long ride. This was before MS and leukemia, uh, any of those fundraising rides. They started out with a hiking trek and then they moved into the biking treks. Oh. And so, uh, which is an interesting fact. And this was the American Lung Association located in Sacramento, California. So I happened to, they asked me if I wanted to help them, um, but I first went on a bike trek. I had, I had an old Nishiki and it was from, um, actually took the train from Sacramento to Lake Tahoe, Donner Pass, rode up through the mountains over Mount Lassen to Ashland and then over to Klamath Falls. So it was a fair amount of mountain riding. And it's probably the best vacation I ever took. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but <laughs> I made Love it. Love those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And over a period of time, I started riding more. I started getting better bicycles. I started working for them. Uh, we mm. led some giant tours that lasted for five days. Uh, one was from Sacramento to San Francisco, all through the wine country and the Northern California mm. coast. Another one was out of San Diego going to Onsborego Desert. Another one was on Vancouver Island in, uh, mm. in Canada. And then they started uh, leading other types of rides as well. And I also worked for a private touring company where they, it was camping trips and also um, hotel tours. And then they said, well, then they became the statewide directors of the Lung Association Bike Trek Program. So the, the Lung Association decided to have three-day bike treks at the various uh, affiliates in California. And so there were three-day rides and it helped them start 
organizing and fundraising and getting all those rights together for the Lung Association. And then I took over the contract they had while they ran their other tours. I helped them with their other tours. So the three, one of the most interesting uh, three-day rides I did was on Catalina Island. Uh, mm -hmm. We would get all the mountain, there was a mountain bike uh, ride. So we'd get 250 people that had raised, uh, I don't know, three to $500. I don't, don't remember. Get them on this big boat and feed them pizza and make announcements. And then everybody <laughs> would throw their pizza up on the way out to Catalina Island. <laughs> Well, so what a good idea that is, eh, right? <laughs> it was interesting. So we camped out there. We had uh, several rides out on the island and then back and some parties on the beach. Uh, I did some other things where I did a two week long rides from, let's say, Kalispell to uh, through Glacier National Park and then up to Lake Louise and, um, and to Calgary. So people would raise money from any lung association in the nation. And I would uh, take them. Uh, they would pay me a certain amount to take that person and then raise money for their local affiliate. So I did some very long rides, like, you know, from Seattle to San Francisco, through the mountains and down the coast. Wow. I did one in uh, New Mexico, I did another one around Moab and <gasps> Grand Junction and Telluride, and then um, the Canada one. So I just made up routes and would take Take them on these rides and they're all camping mm -hmm. trips so i was really good at driving rider trucks and going shopping and organizing it was, it was a lot of work setting up the tents yeah yes yeah. well i didn't yeah. have to set up the tents i mean everybody helped cook and clean and so i just had to organize it all and had friends helping me and stuff so it was it was a good time for a while so i just <laughs> believe that when you're um love something uh you don't you're not making a huge living but you're following your passion and mm -hmm. i met a lot of great people and saw a lot of great places and uh, doing all the bike touring things. Um, so uh, during kind of towards the tail end of that, I had a boyfriend that used to own a bike shop. And um, this this was like in the 90s. And he wanted to do uh, first, he went bankrupt in his damn bike shop. He didn't do so well, but he decided to start another business where he learned about the internet. And um, he was pretty fascinated about it. I said, well, we could start a company where we do websites for outdoor companies. And some of them were bicycle companies, right? Yeah. Uh, rafting companies, adventure travel. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of our clients were like Royal Robins and, uh, and then a bunch of rafting companies and, and just out adventure travel. Um, and we had a huge directory called Adventure Sports Online where we had lots of content. This is before the Google search mm -hmm. engines. Mm. Uh, it was before social media, so there, there were directories out there, and so people would advertise on our site. We hosted websites, and we built them for outdoor companies. Oh. So I did that for 15 years. I didn't build them. I did all the marketing and sales, and in the meantime, I uh, bought and sold another bike, a bike tour called the Great Western Bicycle Rally in Paso Robles, <clears throat> which is a beautiful wine country in the central California coast, and it's like a... <laughs> A gathering, a Memorial Day weekend. It's actually been over 50 years this event has happened. And uh, so is it where you have 25 rides all around the area from 10 miles to 100 oh miles. Oh, my God, and that's all fascinating. Kinds of activities. Yeah, we had like a vendor fair. We had uh, hill climbs and a huffy toss and kids <laughs> games. And Does I that still go a, on? Yes, it's still going on. It's called the Great Western Bicycle Rally. So, okay, and, so... Can I just ask a couple of questions sure. before we move on? Sure. Now, can so can you like can you organize? So, say I here in Canada want to go over there and mm -hmm. participate. Can I bring a group and and yeah, join in and, and right? And you can camp there. It's at a fairgrounds, and you can oh. rent an RV. You can stay in hotels around the area. Mm -hmm. Paso Robles has. It's probably one of the nicest riding areas in California, besides uh, the northern part around Sonoma and that area. Right. Because it's got a okay. huge variety of roads, and that's 40 miles from the coast. Oh. So, okay. um, yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, that's really good to know. And you have all these uh, routes already made up for you. you. Just go out and ride on your own. They have some organized ones, too, the rest stops. But then you can just do your own thing, too. So. That's why I owned it. I thought it was such a terrific event. It brought people in uh, mm -hmm. into cycling. And yeah. It, it's a real um, networking camaraderie thing. People from all over California, mostly. So 
anyway, I ran that and then uh, sold that business with the website stuff and the directory at the tail end of that business. Um, I started outdoorindustryjobs.com. And this is a self-serve job board where you where companies simply pay with a credit card. They create their profile. They post the job. And then okay. the job seeker puts up their resume, free for them, and they apply directly to the employer. So I connect people. I'm not a recruiter. I don't have a lot of contact with these, um, okay. these people, not these people, my clients and the job seekers. Sometimes I get calls and stuff, but um, <laughs> I just connect people. So I use LinkedIn to market yeah. the jobs that are on the website. I have a newsletter with 65,000 people on it wow. I've been for 16 years. Right. And I market in all segments of the outdoor industry, including bicycling. Part one of the sites that I bring people into my site is bicycleindustryjobs.com. If you were to type in that, that is the same jobs that are on outdoorindustryjobs.com. Okay. So, um, so anyway, I in the meantime, I think uh, we had talked about um, the Sea Otter Classic. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Because. Yes. Um, uh... Yeah, because I was looking at that one because I wanted to feature some events that are happening, uh -huh. you know, and that was one that kind of pop kept on popping up with a couple other ones like Rebecca Rush's uh, um, mm -hmm. Private Idaho and yep. and Barry Roubaix and things like that that were right. iconic yeah. uh, longtime events. Yes. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm like talking to the same person. <laughs> I'm like, what are the well, <laughs> I the, my my uh, internet company I had with a partner. Um, he had a sales rep that actually was a friend who owned a friend who's owned the Sea Otter Classic. He helped start it, and okay. so we almost went into business together. We did not, and we hosted their website way back, like in their tenth year. They're now like in yeah, it's, yeah. Eight, there's eight years some of them have been like around for now. like a long, long time. Yeah, so they've been actually kind of gone through a long uh, road of changes, but um, so I started working with them on the back end of their their uh, whole website program where we did all that, and then I just after we sold the business, a lot of things happened, but uh, I still work with them. If you were to call the Seattle Classic phone number, uh, the eight hundred number, I answer that phone. I, <laughs> I contract out with them because I have a really good friend that runs a lot of that event has for a long time. Right. So I keep on saying, yes, I'll come and work again. Um, but it is an incredible event. Um, yeah. It's based uh, outside of Monterey at Laguna Seca Raceway. Um, it has anywhere from small little kids to people in their 70s participating, either racing or recreational thing. It's turned into uh, the vendor fair has about 400 booths. It's huge. <gasps> wow. They have, yes, they have music and beer gardens and bike valets. And I mean, it's amazing uh, what it's turned into. And in the, in the bicycle business, there was a trade show called Interbike for, for many yes. years. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, Interbike was stopped because of various reasons. And wasn't it COVID? So a lot of people are going that was... to the Otter Classic for business. So more and more shops are going there, more and more uh, oh. buyers of people. There's more business meetings going on at the Sea Otter. Oh. So it's kind of replaced some of the business side of it, although it is a completely consumer trade show. Um, right. And or not trade show, it's an expo festival. <clears throat> so um, it's, a, it's a very interesting event to work at. I would be going anyway to market the business and make connections with the employers. But, I like um, that, you know, it's, related. it's, and it's an important place. I like, um, cause I'm just thinking about myself for some of the business project that I'm looking at and to actually get to some of these events and participate in them and yes. network, like yes. network with like it's business networking. people who are yes. on bikes. Like it's, I never even thought of that. I don't know why, but, um, but yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a good and business um, write-off. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a beautiful area. It's worth visiting it's by the Big Sur coast. And uh, you can camp. Uh, it, it's The property there is owned by the BLM and Fort Ord, which is a military what, base type thing. What state is it in? It's in California. It's, uh, mm. out, it's by Monterey, California. Right. Which is uh, but uh, two hours south of San Francisco. 
right. on the coast. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, so there's camping at, it's in the hills above Monterey. So there's, you, there's 10,000 people that actually camp around there <gasps> as well. Yeah. Is it they a weekend have, event? It's four day event from a Thursday to a Sunday Whoa. in April, um, April, oh, April 7 through 10 or something like that. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you can go to seeallwordclassic.com and get all those details. Here I am marking for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get off of them. And um, that's okay. It's a great event, and I am involved with it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I know, but we could probably come have you come back or or talk to somebody specifically about that exactly event because I think it's worth mentioning. Um, yeah. But let's talk about your the outdoor industry. Um, jobs and a little bit more of how uh people can find like the types of jobs because I was like blown away about yeah like the type of jobs that you were posting and I know well, that you you pull in so how do yeah. you can yeah talk how about do how I that make all those works. connections I mean it's yeah. um what's been interesting is that you know I've been doing this for a long time and I faithfully uh oh maybe in the last five years have really put all the jobs on LinkedIn and yeah. all the other social media uh, the smart sites. place to go like yeah and is it and, your business um, related but i don't know if a bicycle mechanic goes goes and looks for a job in linkedin or not but um uh, well, what happened with particularly when covid came along the bike shops were deemed essential so they never closed yeah and so the bike shops were just getting inundated by new customers buying bikes and uh then they so, oh, we need mechanics. Then they then they ran out of supplies and then they ran out of bikes and now they have the supplies and they need people to, to work at the shop. So the bike shops postings have probably tripled since a year ago. It's um, crazy. And I've noticed yes. also um, bike mechanic courses mm -hmm. that yeah, are there's happening several too, of those. Which, yeah. which I've never seen before, which obviously <clears throat> makes sense because basically you're either like have been in the industry for decades and you're probably would like to retire as a mechanic or yeah. you're some kid who's in there uh working to get a free bike you know what right. i mean like it's kind of like a job but you're not really uh going to be around for very long um well some and, of them are professionals and yeah there oh, and then, are... i mean but you just need more of them yes, you know and, and treat it like a serve like a trade and it I is a say. trade. I mean, it's usually between fifteen and twenty-five dollars an hour. Although I've seen sixty thousand a year, just depends on the shop and how many yeah. bikes they have and who they're, what they're in charge of. They combine their jobs with other things. Mm -hmm. um, but on the site on outdoorsyjobs.com, there is a bicycle resource area, and there's about three different um, institutes or, or educational things for. Yeah. For a uh, bike mechanic school. So you can go there and find find that if you want to be a bike, bike mechanic. It's um, a fun job, I think, in a certain part of your life. And then some people are pros and do it all their lives. Right. And there's a lot of bike companies that need, um, like one called United Wheels. They are Huffy and uh, some other Niner bikes, some other bikes. They're in Ohio and they're always looking for mechanics for the company itself, not just bike shops need, but bike companies need them to do assembly or or whatever so um it's kind of a lower end job on the site not that it is a lower end job it's just not as high paying as some others but it's a good right. way to step into the bicycle industry mm -hmm. and get to know a business if you want to be involved in owning or running a bicycle shop it's a big eye opener to be involved and they have a lot of fun some of these um bike shops are have uh beer some of them have coffee bars some get yeah. so involved to bring people in i mean yeah yeah oh yeah you have to have so that, cool. that sure kind they of... do that in canada too yeah 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 some of so, them do but yeah. um yeah it's it's like those it's like a combination you just right you you, you put it together with a coffee bar or something for hours. right like, i'd love to see more women get into it too um <laughs> maybe seems that's to be, what i'll it's do a lot of men just talking tech stuff but there's uh, it's a, i know it's just like you know us yeah, women so are like, excuse oh, me. we love cycling, <laughs> but like, I don't really care about the pressure you put in your tire. Like, let's yeah, <laughs> stop working. You gotta like, know that. <laughs> I know, but big, like, <laughs> yeah, I would say women probably have pretty good opportunity to go work in bike shops and, and really have fun. Um, yeah. So anyway, yes. And then there's other companies um, like Giant and Trek. 
um, the Trek HR person called me on the phone one day. She goes, well, I typed in what I would type in to find <laughs> a job in the bicycle industry, bicycle jobs. And I found your site on the front page of Google. I said, well, mm, very good. Yay. Most, most of the employers SEO. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, so she's been posting a lot. I do get, you know, REI here and there. And um, well, I noticed engineers too. What's that? Engineers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Lots of engineers or uh, it's amazing to designers. Yeah. You know, you need um, you need these people. And and so that's really why why LinkedIn is really good for that, because some of these engineers mm -hmm. are people that want to work in the outdoor bicycle industry. And it's a great marriage of interests. Um, yeah. And that's the reason I started the website is because some of these industries uh, are kind of insular and they uh you know it's it i wanted to help bring in some new blood into the industry people that have a passion for these different sectors but don't know how to get into it and a simple way to do it um right there are some recruiters in the industry but you know the middle the middle management and lower end jobs um even like the engineering jobs or whatever they're not you don't know where they would be unless you you went to a site like mine or did a lot of internet um yeah you know, searching it. So it brings in and brings in people that don't aren't in the industry, but want to be and they love to bicycle or paddle or whatever they're going to do. Yeah, it is. I can imagine like, you know, how do you get connected to say, like you said, track or giant mm -hmm. to work at, you know, to, to, to mark yeah. yourself to the, and yeah. uh, that's why I was like, I'm like, I just looked at like I've been watching your posts for like a couple months now mm -hmm. and I'm just like, wow, wow. Yeah. Social wow. media, marketing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like they're, and people, they, oh, you know, it's funny because, oh, outdoor jobs. And they're thinking like, you know, a guy jobs and stuff. I said, well, actually the outdoor industry has jobs just like any other industry. I know they you do. had some fishing. Yeah. No, I have fishing. I have I was like, hunting and shooting. What? Like you just don't um, think about I, yeah, it's, it's they not all something. have, they're making products just like any other industry. They yeah. need professionals to work for them, but they want somebody that, that will fit in their culture, right. that has a passion. So mm -hmm. they come to the site because I'm targeting, they're getting people that actually are interested in what they're doing and have the skill sets to be uh, useful in their company. Um, so anyway, it's it's worked out that way. If you post a job on Indeed, you're going to get 400 resumes, resumes of people just posting for the heck of it, or they oh. just applying for the heck of it, or they're not right. interested in the industry. Right. So with this job board, you get less resumes, but higher quality with people that actually uh -huh. are serious, are, it fit in your culture. Mm -hmm. Right. I know it's better than hiring your buddy's <clears throat> friend who likes to ride bikes but you're just like it's just not. yeah <laughs> you know, like so do right. you know the percentage of jobs that get filled from not your side all. I'm assuming it's <laughs> not at all <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it's very successful it's been still around but I was just curious because oh. you know, I'm like because like you said like the, the I would say like the typical mechanic probably wouldn't think to, you know, to go to LinkedIn. Well, maybe not specifically LinkedIn, yeah. but maybe search right, and find. Um, and yeah. Well, that's where, you know, you, I post an Instagram and Facebook and oh, Do Twitter you really? And, where do you, what's your Instagram oh, yeah. handle? Yeah. If you look, if you, if those are on the front page of the website links to. Oh, them. there it is. Okay. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, perfect. I mean, I just I'm spread post. it out all over and whatever happens, mm -hmm. happens. I'm very bad about following through and trying to see, you know, if, if a shop <laughs> posts again and again, uh, I, okay, it must be successful, but there right. are shops that are having, are struggling with it because uh -huh. uh, I talked to a great shop in Pennsylvania and no one's applying. Well, you know, Am I going to move to Pennsylvania? Right. But then I found out that they have great mountain bike and gravel riding and road riding. It's like mm -hmm. a Mecca. You know, so people aren't aware of how great some of these places are, and maybe they would move there. I've had shops in Alaska, shops in, I mean, everywhere, yeah. all over the nation posting. And um, it's been a big surprise to me. I, I'm just like, well, they're actually, you know, there, there's another place you can post, uh, the bicycle retailer 
magazine, online magazine. Um, we have a classified section. So those are the two places, my job board and their job board where normally people That's post crazy. Jobs. Only That's two it. places. That I've of, seen. Yeah, yeah. For mechanics. And so somehow I grabbed some of those people. Uh, so, you know, I, I have a huge, and everybody tells everybody else, it's a very big networking thing. When I send out my newsletter, they pass it to all their friends. I mean, that's what it's all about is telling each oh. other about the jobs. Maybe yes. I should get on your newsletter. You should. You can write it on the front page here. You can do so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope it's you post this podcast episode. <laughs> so, because yeah. what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to go to your Instagram page and mm -hmm. post on that and also your Facebook. So I'm going to get yeah, connected on you. all those. And like, cause I don't know if you, you go into, cause I'm on some big gravel pages mm -hmm. and there used to be some big cycling pages I was on, but mm -hmm. like just posting like, like, Hey, did you know, yeah, you know, did source. you know? Mm -hmm. about, you know, if you, somebody's, you know, you're passionate, you're looking for a job and, um, or you're, you're beginner mechanic looking for something, I don't know, but, um, yeah. people would know, or your people social know media people expert or... and you ride your bike all the time mm. and you'd like to talk about social media. You like to do social media in the bicycle industry yeah. and digital marketing and all those things. Right. Um, it's turn your passion into, and I talk, and there's a lot of people that actually in LinkedIn, I meet that. I've always wanted to work in the outdoor industry, the bicycle industry, you know, how do I do that? And I said, well, I'm not a recruiter, but here's a website, go for it. And, you know, it gives them, <laughs> they kind of see what's going on. I kind of designed my life so I wouldn't have to work all the time. That was, well, don't we all want yes. to do that little designing <laughs> of our own so we could like work yeah. 20 hours, play for 20 hours. Yeah. That's and then whittle it down idea. to 10, 50. <laughs> Well, I, I, I have been around the block a little bit. I am 66 years old. So, oh, you know, you look amazing. So I admit that well, I don't, thank you. Um, but it <laughs> is, um, you know, I've, I've been in the outdoor bicycles for a long time. I know a lot of people, I've done a lot of things and it's been a great career uh, moving from one thing to another. When internet came along, I'm not an internet geek. I am not a tech person. I just, unfortunately have to get involved with how websites work but I, mm -hmm. I tell people what to do but I started early in 95 with the internet yeah, yeah so, that's probably about when it uh yeah showed up officially because I'm right you know I'm 51 and and in the 80s well, you look I was good in high too school, by the way <laughs> <laughs> so in the when you say in the 80s I was in high school and yeah. we didn't even have we had still had typewriters back then right um Absolutely. and you know, it, it was like somewhere in, I don't know, maybe 96. Mm -hmm. and then, Where, you no, know, you no, had no, no, AOL I was working. Thing and yeah, like I was on computers when I was working, 91. Yeah, um, but and it was Windows more, like, came more, in and yeah, very basic. DOS before that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we started out, uh, this, I had this boyfriend and I, uh, he knew about the outdoor industry because he had a bike shop. He knew about the trade shows. He knew, uh, and he's also a rafting guy. So he knew all about the rafting people. And, so we went oh, to a trade do show. rafting and, too. Yeah. Yeah. Did some rafting in the past. Um, <laughs> outdoor retailer is in, was in Reno at the time. Now it's in Salt Lake and then it was Denver. Uh, and what they did was they put all the internet people that were trying to do things in one little small room. And, you know, there, the show was, fairly large but not that big I mean but Camelback was there and Veltech Sports which did oh CD shoes and all these different people right yeah as you know probably about 300 booths maybe 400 I don't know and they would come into this internet room and like oh my god what is this and they didn't even know <laughs> how to how to use a mouse so they're coming up our booth we're showing them some samples of websites what they could do with their oh, I remember my website in yeah nine, in 2000 it was like I think I had somebody from like, um, I went to the college and I'm like, is anybody, you know, want to do a little project? Like I had approached, yeah. you know, it was very basic, but I mean, like it's all was. you need, like prices, calendar, yeah, how to contact me, address. Yep, <laughs> you know, yep. Easy. So <laughs> we built this directory. We had some sample websites. We had like a little um, boot prints kind of moving along on the site. That was pretty special. 
Um, <laughs> and we had to teach people how to use the mouse. It was in 95. They didn't know how to use the mouse. We were showing them how to use it. And yeah. we're saying, you know, this is going to be the future. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, we're giving some oh. free websites away. No one took us up on it. What? Uh, oh, yeah. I was like, you know. Um, so, but over a period of time, I relentlessly, we had about 250 hosted websites in the outdoor industry. So we were like the largest directory out there in the outdoor industry. There was another wow. one called Gorp. Uh, that was it. Um, <laughs> so and then they had the all dot com boom and and the failure and all these people wanted to be affiliates and they were making up all these businesses that were making money and they would approach us and um, we kind of lived through that whole thing. But it got to be the point where we were making money off of hosting. Yeah. Uh, and after a while, hosting got so cheap and I, I really didn't enjoy um, doing all, you know, helping the clients with the websites. It got to the point where you do the website, well, the rafting companies, they'd rather be rafting, right? They don't want to do the website. So you're teaching yeah. all these people how to mar internet market. Some of them don't want to be there. Some do. The larger businesses, you do a great job and train all their employees. Then they get a new CEO and take everything away. It was a very frustrating yeah. business for me to be in. Right. <clears throat> And had employees and all that stuff, which didn't really like doing either. I'm better at working on my own. So, you know, it was a great experience. <laughs> I it took, it took me to where I am. I learned so much about internet, internet marketing. I'm a marketing and connector. I'm not a tech geek. Uh, but right. I'm kind of like that too. Just to yeah. To I got to survive bit. the social media stuff. Like <clears throat> just keep my, keep people like eyeballs on me, but Right. I mean, if I could, if I had an, well, when I make more money, I'm just like, like freaking slough it off on somebody else. Yeah. Like, get myself a nice little VA who loves doing that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, it's, um, I want to live my life outside as well and do other yeah, things. Yeah. I'm and, not, and I'm not camp and, and, about doing a bunch of content either. Right. My job is yeah. the content. That's yeah. what I pretend anyway. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it's been a great experience, a long, a long road. I've had a great time um, making a really good living. Um, someday I'll probably sell the business or someone else will take it over. I, I really haven't figured that out. So, mm, well, you got a yeah. couple of years, right? Yeah. As long as you're still having fun. I mean, yeah. that's what they say, right? Yeah. Got to have fun with it. Not, <laughs> when it's not stops having being fun, then it's time to uh, move on to something else. Right. So is there a... Do you have like a, anything new you're going to add to this or is this some, um, like, is there anything that you want to share that's happening? Oh, 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 oh what? here, since you've been in the <clears throat> industry for so long, maybe I should ask you, what do you foresee happening in the future with regards to like, you know, what's been currently happening? Like, do you see any trends happening that are coming well, the, down? The remote job thing is really <laughs> happening. I, in fact, here in Tahoe, I've talked to people that young people, they say, well, I don't want to go work at someone's company. I'm going to work remotely. And they're figuring out any way they can do it. And more yeah. companies are offering figuring remote jobs too. if they mm -hmm. can. So that's changed the complexion of a lot of stuff. Um, and I, the job... Right now, uh, obviously, there's jobs all over the place and not mm -hmm. enough uh, job seekers. So this is why the job board is doing very well and why you see many right. more bike jobs on there. And uh, the COVID kind of got people outside and they go, oh, we, I know, we like it's not great. This. So, yeah. And so everybody is buying stuff. And then so these companies are just kind of going nuts. Like, how do we get all these people in here to work? <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. And I, and I'm not going to put down any any younger person who's stepping out of college right now. Their whole concept of work oftentimes is different than when we stepped out of college. Yeah, definitely. And their concept of what a job is, is different than ours. Not worse or better. I'm just saying their expectations are different than mine. I And mm -hmm. I still recommend that anybody that wants to get in the outdoor industry go work for $15 an hour or $12 an hour for a while and learn and mm -hmm. get to know the industry and work, go work at a customer service job, even though you have a college degree in some company, work there for a couple of years, move up that company or go to another company in a higher position, get the experience from the bottom up. 
don't expect to just ride right into a high-end job. I just don't see how you can yeah. expect that. That's me, my personal opinion, but maybe. Well, that's no, I think you're bang on. Like you, and that's the best way to do is to start if you really, really want to make, you know, your outdoors a, a business. Right. I find like you've, you really do have to work, you know, like the, the bike tours, um, and, uh, and working for the, for bike mechanics and, mm -hmm. you know, is this really for you? Like you're saying like outdoor right. job, like you want to make this your, right. You know, it's not just being photographer, you know, that you see a lot of this on Instagram, like the photographers and then the, the living out they're of the van. They're going around their vans and they're doing yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, mm yeah. -hmm. I don't know how long that, there's so many people doing it. I don't know how long lasting that is. I, I mean, it's just so different. Um, this is, this is and, what they say. Like everybody's got to come back and find, and I mean, a lot of people did start doing that in the mm -hmm. last two years, but mm -hmm. And they also say that there's going to be a migration back to jobs, like jobs, jobs. Yeah, I think like, there has to be in order for yeah. people to make a decent living. Either it, I mean, I know that when I was younger, I just, I didn't know what the heck I wanted to be. I never, I still don't know what I want to be. Uh, seriously. <laughs> well, you did a great <laughs> job of like wondering. When, like, yeah. <laughs> and so I Helping always found that I just, I, my, my dad wanted me to work for a corporation and my mom wanted me to be <laughs> a just... teacher in some small town. So I didn't do either one. I did get attention teaching credential and physical education and a mass and a degree in business, but I I just said, okay, well, here are these bike tours. I'll just do them. Here's this, I'll do that. And then eventually I just walk, if doors open, you walk through them and you learn as you go. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no idea that I'd be doing this 20 years ago or 30 years ago at all. I mean, obviously the internet wasn't around during yeah. that time. So uh, it, I just think that, you know, if you have to live with several roommates in some resort <laughs> area, you do it. You don't have to have your own apartment. <laughs> I did that. Happy car, right? Yeah. yeah. When you're yeah. young, just go do these things or go yeah. travel and learn whatever, mm -hmm. but step through the door and step through another door and step through another door and things mm -hmm. eventually progress as you make friends and know people and find interesting I think it's the big connection. It's a, mm -hmm. you have to start getting connected. Yeah. You can't yeah, just sort of like. Yeah. You know, hang out on social media and Instagram and expect people to to know you, know what you want and and things. So yeah. you have to start doing the the face to face. Right. Like you said, like going to otter the otter uh the sea otter. Uh, the sea otter yep. and right. and connecting with like every booth. Right. Collecting the business cards, collecting the contacts, getting Yep. Yeah. I well, I've been doing that. Mm -hmm. Since 95, going to all these different trade shows, including the fishing and hunting industries, which hunting is not my favorite subject, but they do have gear and yes, they've got um, lots optics of gear. and things like that. Um, so, I mean, I went to every single booth, I still do, at every single show and get a card and hand something to somebody there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I also, by the way, had a job board for about eight years in the natural organic industry that I started. Oh. And I sold, sold that. It's like all the products in organic and natural food, supplements, ingredients, and home and personal care products. And so wow. it's called naturalindustryjobs.com. And that, I mean, I could have kept doing that and keep going to the trade shows. And I finally said, you know, this is not my thing. I'm going to go ahead and sell this part of the business. So I did, but that, that, that business is still going on. And um, so if you want to, it's a huge, it's grown so much in the last 20 years, the natural and organic stuff you see. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, buy, yeah. Right. All those yeah, things and like, and growing story, inside. Yeah. Like that, that's exploding too. Like having yeah. your own garden inside your house. Yeah. You know, and those, those towers. Yeah. There's just so much in that field that, um, I mean, how many supplements do you see in the grocery store and how many, the natural lotions and, you know, it goes mm -hmm. on and on and the food, the cauliflower puffs and the, how many kinds of popcorn do you need? I mean, that's the kind of thing <laughs> goes on and on. Anyway, <laughs> I did that for eight years as well. And wow. sold that business, um, and just stuck with the outdoor cause that's more of my passion. Yeah. More fun. So, Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh. This is super fascinating. Let me think if I had, uh, 
figure something. Let me see. Do I have any more questions? Because I was really fascinated and um, you've just really made me think about the new way of connecting and to getting, um, yeah. getting to those events. And I didn't realize that some of them have grown to that. Cause I was talking to mm-hmm. a gentleman who runs um, the ride for conquering cancer here mm-hmm. in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And, and he was just talking about like five, how 5,000 people do that it's over a weekend. Uh-huh. And of course they've also set up like their booth, booth areas and, right. you know, all the, 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 you know, CEOs and of these big companies who have cl- teams and everything mm-hmm. and just the, the opportunity to connect. I was just like, you know yeah. what? I never really thought about that. Yeah, no, I've been in outdoor and, events uh, and bike events for a long time. And yeah, there's a lot they've of them just, out there. They've taken on a, a whole new right um, life of their own. Like, yeah, some of them have big festivals. I think the CIA yeah. is the biggest event in the world. I really, Barry do, Roubaix as as... has a big one too. He, yeah. uh, Matt, Matt, Acker, yeah. I, inter- I, uh, I interviewed him. Ah. And, uh, and coast how many coast. people participate in that? Uh, I think like he said, like 5,000. Yeah. The CR is bigger than that. It has yeah. 10, at least 10,000 athletes, 40 or 50, 60,000 spectators. Well, this is a, just it's a one huge. day event. Too, yeah. And this though. is a four day event. So yeah. a little bit different. So it's kind of yeah. become over a period of time, um, the center of the business in bicycling because Interbike left. Right. Um, Big, well, big it's big kind of a better in venue, right? Outside, part. Yeah, the trade show, show the uh, kind of stuff. COVID, yeah, COVID kind of knocked a lot of the trade shows for mm-hmm. a loop. Um, outdoor retailer, which has been around for a long time, is getting smaller and smaller. Then there's another one called the Big Gear Show, where some of the bicycle companies are going to. There's no place for the bicycle company, like all the accessory companies. Because uh, yeah, and there's more smaller there's to accessory go. companies. Yeah, where like are they the, going to go to market? Right. Right. So, consumer yeah, shows uh, yeah i've seen more um more cool accessories for and backpacking like back bicycle clothing touring and, and yeah the bike bike touring stuff yeah. that's exploding too and like all the the gear wrapped around that like right, it's the just, mountain bike backpacking all yeah that. really yeah. cool and then the gravel riding of course is really the gravel exploded. riding and yeah, uh, like so, all the accessories and uh, yeah, things are just, it, it, it feels like the accessories are just taking a whole new light. Like there's so many people are going like bettering a lot of what was oh, out there have. because yeah. of, you know, there's just been generic stuff, right. That right. we go in, we buy, it's from Louis Garneau or it's from, you know, like some, right. like, some brand names that we're familiar with and we just buy them because of it. And yeah. now people are, are getting more creative for sure, and, you know, materials and, um, how do you, women's use clothing is getting better. Women's clothing is, is <laughs> another one that's taken off, like, um, especially in Europe more so than, than here. I've yeah. so far I've noticed just cause I've, I've come across more ladies over there who are creating their own brands. Yep. Um, I haven't anything, yep. I haven't in uh, the States here yet, but maybe you might know some. Well, uh, yeah, there are some out there. I'm not remembering them at the top of my head, but there's some okay. like really great shorts and various yeah. things. But I mean, I know in 95, there was very little. Oh, okay, I know. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. I still have like, a pair that I have that I got. Yeah. Like, I, I know, like the tops or whatever. That, <laughs> that yeah. Still nice. It's, it's changed so much. Um, it's, and I, I don't know what percentage of the bike riders are women now, but oh, I'd say at least 40 or 50. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I used to go to bike rides a long time ago. We do the centuries and I did a double mm-hmm. century once. Um, and there'd be a long line in the women's, uh, uh, at the men's restroom, but short line at the women's uh, I know but it's opposite now <laughs> so there's yeah. many 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 more women right and it's great to see it really yeah. is um and many more women are getting better at mountain biking too um mm-hmm. some are a little timid because it, it is it can be it intimidating. is intimidating yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um it's it's really great to see the younger women, especially at the sea otter racing and uh, having a great time. And that particular event also has kids races and they have demos where you can try any bikes. And they see the kids Ooh. bouncing around 
around little, little like little striders, what they call those strider bikes and the parent along with them. And then they have bouncy houses. They do all this stuff and they let kids 12 and under for free to come in. Um, oh, and cool. so they encourage, and then they do bike um, like demonstrations at uh, elementary schools around the area. So oh, we'll come and do a bunch awesome. of jumping and stuff. So um, that event actually was just purchased last year by Lifetime, which is a huge corporation that owns big spas and the Leadville 100 and oh. several other big rides. Really? Um, yes. It's owned by a company called Lifetime. So they made a big change selling that to that corporation. So Seattle's yeah, going through some changes. Huh. But, yeah. I hope it does, you know, because sometimes when companies like great <laughs> events like that are sold off to bigger yeah. corporations, it's just, it's a money grab. Like it's not a money grab, yeah. but it just changed the whole environment of. Yeah, um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. They I say they don't want to change it much, was, but- Well, <laughs> I, I, I heard, Le- I thought Leadville was like personally owned. Oh, no, it's over my lifetime now. Yeah. The oh, Leadville now. 100. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that by grace. Yeah, I don't I know how many years, that. but maybe at least in some other endurance events, if you were to go right. to the website, they own quite a few. Wow. So it's an interesting, yeah, thing. Anyway, wow. so. Um, well, this is, uh, I am so glad to know you. <laughs> well, I love nice being connected with <laughs> connectors. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I kind of just hide my house and reach out to everybody. I don't really, I, you know, I'm kind of behind the scenes. I People don't really, mm-hmm. for to, I mean, I'm not a big corn blower. I don't out there, hey, look at me. I don't do that. I just, proof is in the pudding. The, the jobs are out there and there you go. I mean, yeah, I, I and I love meeting people that have gotten jobs through the website. I meet them at mm-hmm. trade shows in various places. And mm-hmm. and that's that's the satisfying part. I, I don't get a lot of feedback because... I just don't. I sometimes people are give me compliments, but I, I don't mm. care about that. I'm just happy that I can connect people and that they're finding their way through the industry. Yes. So, um, yeah. I mean, like that's a big thing is finding your way through the industry. Like, mm-hmm. like what do you do? But wow. Yeah. So, so I think Laurel, I've given my two cents on that. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> I would think so. So if you want to get to know Laurel, go straight to LinkedIn. And of course, her outdoor industry jobs.com. Right. And I do uh, have an uh, email contact form there also. My phone number's on there. So mm-hmm. pretty easy to get a hold of if anybody has any questions. And, and if there's uh, any people, any employers that are interested in posting, uh, the prices are on the website. It's very transparent um, and about what you get with it. I mm-hmm. believe in just letting everybody know what, what so, it is. So, hey, do you, is this just North America or you can you this, be from It's anywhere? Canada also. US oh, I mean, Canada. like, does it, it doesn't it include like anything like in like Europe or is it just sort of? Well, it could. It's a, I mean, I have all that set up, but it's people, I mean, you when you start crossing into Europe, yeah, they hire a lot differently. And if I were to mm. expand in Europe, I would need to have someone living in Europe marketing this job board right. and getting the job seekers into it. Mm-hmm. Um, some Canadian companies do post. I wish more of them would. Um, Maybe they don't easy. know. Maybe well, after this I mean, they'll find out. I don't know. Just, just tell them, will you please? <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, coming like you know, you need test. to go up and do that that event. <laughs> yes, the, get around the, uh, into in some Toronto. Canadian. Uh, go into Toronto. Yeah, I got to travel up there and, and do it. Uh, but there is, I keep saying, well, people say, can people from Canada post? Well, yes, there's no border on the internet. You know, it does cross mm-hmm. over on the internet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so and I love point. Canada. I love Canadians. I really do. I run bike tours up there. I love Canada. And the parks are beautiful. People are nice. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> so if I'm you're more... if you're looking for a job in your and you're in Canada, or yes. if you're looking or you're if you're a bike shop who is looking to find employees, yes, then uh-huh. both of you can utilize bike shops, her any kind of touring companies, product companies, rep agencies. I mean, it's every kind of job you can imagine. I mean, there are reps mm-hmm. that go around all the bike shops and sell one company's brand there are there are individual commission only reps that carry a bunch of lines right yeah carry bike lines camelback Mm -hmm. and they'll go to all the different shops 
and earn commission. That's a pretty I know tough a way to make a living. Guys, yeah, those sales reps. And, uh, yeah. Then there are the rep agencies who hire, who carry a lot of lines, and they hire people to go around in an area for them. And so the companies use the rep agency, or they hire their own reps inside, and they take care of themselves. There's a lot of ways that it's arranged. Mm-hmm. If you're into bicycle, if you're into sales, it's lots of opportunities for people to really go get it. You got to really work hard though if you want to yeah. make it, make ends meet on that. You got to you got to work and, and travel a lot. Yeah, but but sales if you can sell anything, you'll never you'll always have a job. Right, if you're a good salesperson. So I actually mm-hmm. um, you can't be shy. You have to get out there and talk. And <laughs> so <laughs> yep. <laughs> And, and, uh, comfortable and, and don't be, people you don't know. Yeah. yeah. And don't uh, get all upset because somebody said no. <laughs> just go to exactly. Just, just wrap around in six months. Let them be rude and or whatever <laughs> they do and move on. Don't take it personally. That's for sure. I've oh. learned that lesson a bunch of times. <laughs> yes. You develop that, that tough skin. So yeah. it's been, it's been amazing, Laurel. And well, it's nice for, meeting you too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to be posting more on those cycling pages because I'm looking for some things. Well, you can come to Lake Tahoe anytime too. So oh, I'm here. gosh, when we can travel, I'm like, yes. can I bring my family? Yeah. Sure. We're all <laughs> Only <skiers>. two bedrooms. <laughs> We're all skiers. Oh, we can find a place to stay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I have but, a ski place, uh, Diamond Peak. I live in Incline Village, which is in the northeast corner of the lake, I have a ski resort five minutes from my house. Oh, woo-hoo. I know. So, so I, I'm very spoiled here. Well, so. we got lots of time to to meet up. Now I'm going to be putting all of her links in the show notes. But where where would be the like the number one place? I, we've always mentioned we've mentioned um, LinkedIn. Um, Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, it's just oh, yes, once once a week. It's very plain. It just has links, the job, where it's located and links to the job. It's not a bunch of news, a bunch of stuff to get you to read. It's just the jobs. That's okay. all you're going to see. That's always good to know. So and, there's nothing worse yeah. than like scrolling through like content. No, I, yeah. no, this is just jobs. And then um, I post on Facebook. If you look up bicycle industry jobs or outdoor industry jobs, I have groups and pages I have Twitter uh, pages in all the different sectors. Oh, I don't have you. I don't have your Twitter. What's your Twitter account? Uh, well, I have to press on the, I have to, it's <laughs> no, outdoor it. underscore jobs. I think I have to go press on it, look at it, uh, <laughs> click on it and see what it is. Um, there's Sorry, a I'll bicycle one also. So I sector out uh, just the bike jobs on the bike, Twitter and outdoor but all of them have outdoor has all the jobs on it, including the right. Jobs. So, okay. So you just go to her website. Right. And, and there's so. a lot of crossover in the industry, by the oh, way. Oh yeah. You, know, I imagine. you may want to work for an outdoor company. So, okay. I bicycle all the time, but you're an outdoor person. Okay. Maybe you start working for some backpack company or something. You have the same skills. You're with people that are outdoors. Right. So there's crossover there. Yeah. I, when we used to, I was a huge into adventure racing in 2000 mm. to 2006. Mm-hmm. And that was when the money was flowing we got free bikes. We got, but we were very competitive yeah. um, as our team and we podiumed quite a bit. Um, but we have <clears throat> free backpacks, free jackets, free, like, you know, and, and for that, we provided lots of feedback as to, you know, yeah. on the products right. you know, as we use them. Um, and that was, uh, that was a really fun time. That would say. be fun. <laughs> it was. You're, an athlete. you're, you're a total athlete. Oh yeah. We did. It sounds like I did, did. You race professionally too, or no, I never no? Okay. made it to the professional. Um, I was, uh, I had my first child at 32, so I was okay. doing that at the same time. That's and, awesome. uh, yeah. but you know, like I put myself out there for a lot of things. And that was also when I started my spinning studio and my, my master's race team and my cycling club. So, mm-hmm. um, just no time for that actually. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, I raced, my last race was in, uh, Utah in okay. 2006 for, okay. it was a 10 day <clears throat> uh, primal quest adventure race. Oh, how cool is that? 
in July. Oh, hot. <laughs> I know when I in say Utah. that to everybody that's like, ah. nobody yeah. is there in Utah. In July. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that. it was in the mountains and not out in the Red Rocks. It was. And no, it was on Red Rock. Oh we my did, gosh. We did super Red hot. Rock. Yeah, we did the mountain biking on Red Rock. Anyways, we could oh, talk forever. So we, we should could. probably just uh, <laughs> just uh, wrap it up. And thank yes. you so much, Laurel. I'll put everything Great meeting you. on um on uh in the show notes. So anybody out there looking and uh to maybe uh post a job, look for a job, share this podcast with somebody um who you know is a lover of outdoors and wants to get themselves. Uh a place to make some money and enjoy what they love. Uh, this is the website to go to. So thanks to all of our well, listeners. Thank you. And, thanks, and thank Laurel you for, for having uh, me. I really appreciate it. Oh, pleasure meeting you and pleasure talking with you. Thanks. So it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Have right, a great thank afternoon. You. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.